The third form that we are going to be looking at today is called point slope form. Point slope form is a kind of funny little formula because it seems much more complex than the others, but when you kind of see where it came from, it makes total sense. So point slope formula has a general form of y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So definitely a lot more stuff going on in this formula than the ones we've looked at before. But here's where this formula comes from. What letter represents slope? M. And how do we find slope from two points? What's our formula? Uh, it is rise over run, but what's our formula if we have two points? Y2 minus Y1 minus X1. Now, let's say this. Let's say we don't have two points at all. Okay, but now let's say we only have a slope and we have a point. So this is no longer our second point because we don't know what it is. Would we also agree that we could put this m over 1? Yes. Okay, so when we have two fractions set equal to each other, we said that was called a proportion. And we could solve the proportion by cross multiplying. So if we cross multiply, so this is really just the slope formula without the fraction written. Okay, it didn't just like magically appear. Okay, we didn't just like hit our head and go, oh, I think this should be a new form. Okay, it is our slope formula. It's just written so that the fraction isn't there. Now, like slope intercept form, point slope form wasn't named with a whole lot of creativity. So what two things do we think we're gonna be able to find from point slope form? Point and slope. A point and a slope. I beat you to it. Okay, bitch, thanks. Okay, so we can find a point and we can find a slope. Slope is still like normal. What letter represents slope? Y. No, M. No, what? M. 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 B. What did you eat for lunch, man? C. Gum. Y. Z. A. B. C. A bunch of gum. Q or X. Okay, so. Your slope is still represented by M, which means our slope is still sitting here in front of the parentheses. The point is where we have to make sure we're really careful. Okay, so the point is X sub 1 comma Y sub 1, but kind of everything about it is backwards. Because the X value which comes first then the formula is last, and the y value that comes second is first, and if that wasn't backwards enough, doesn't this look like a negative x of one? I'm completely confused. Can you rephrase that? The like y of one, like the first y is second, and the second x. No, no, no. The the x value comes first in an ordered pair but is the second chunk of the formula. Oh. The y value comes second in the ordered pair, but is part of the first chunk of the formula. Is that better? Okay, but do we agree that this looks like a negative x sub one? Yeah. But I didn't write the negative down here, right? Yeah. So we also have to take the opposite sign. read this symbol in the math world? Sub minus. Minus, subtraction, negative. negative. A dash. It's also opposite. 
right? It also takes us, tells us to take the opposite of a number. Because if I say negative a, what happens if the value of a is negative 2? Positive. Positive. Well, two negatives make a positive, right? So it's telling us to take the opposite of a. So if there is a subtraction in the formula, it's also telling us to take the opposite sign of that value. Now, once you know what to do with it, it doesn't require like solving skills or anything fancy like that. You just have to make sure you get everything in the right location. So let's say we are given y minus 2 equals 1 half times x minus 7. We should be able to look at this now and agree that this is in point slope form. Okay, which means if it's in point slope form, there are two things that we can find. We can find a slope and we can find a point. The point would be 7 comma 2. Okay, so our point, right, we're looking at an x value and a y value. Okay, where our x value needs to go first and we have to take the opposite sign of what it looks like. So it looks like a negative 7, so I'm going to write a positive 7. The y value over here looks like a negative 2, so I am going to write a positive 2. Okay, the slope is a little bit more straightforward. What's my slope? One half. one half. No changing the sign, nothing there. It just is one half. I mean, there is a way we are going to be able to do something with this yes and turn it into slope-intercept form, but, but it would just potentially give us a fraction yeah. and an intercept that we can't use as a starting point. Now, when they say why do that, you're going to basically be spending the whole next unit that we do doing exactly that, and we'll talk about why we do that when we get there. y plus 5 equals x minus 3. I got it. Now, obviously we could do some rearranging and turn this into standard form or into slope-intercept form, but just in the format that this is in, we can find information for point slope form, which means we can find a slope and we can find a point. Okay? So if we are looking at this, and we want to find our point. Drew, do you know what our x coordinate would be? Three. Three. Evan, do you know what our y coordinate would be? Negative five. Negative five. Carter, what's our slope? Three over. You got the tricky one. <laughs> slope is always in front of the parentheses. Okay, so it's. It's five negative. It's negative three. Wait, what? What is sitting right here? If it's nothing, what would it be? Zero. Not zero. One. One? Okay. So our slope is one? Yeah. I gave Carter the tricky one. Now, we have to be really careful with this. Really, really careful with this. Because my students are okay once I sort of say that, and they go, okay, are we okay with this being a one now that we see that? Or if there was just a negative sitting there, would we be okay with that being a negative one? Yes. What happens if I say this? Again, we could rearrange, and we could put this in another form, but just what it is right now. Okay, what does n equal? Two. Are we okay with two? Yeah. What's our point? One comma six. Negative two comma six. One comma six. What? Yeah. But 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 what, William? always one because it's just an x thing. Okay, there's a one in front of the x, yes. 
But this isn't where I find the piece for my point. Right? The piece for my point is what's being added or subtracted. And when a number is missing through addition or subtraction, it's a zero. Because our identity of multiplication is one, but our identity of addition is zero. Okay, and so when we learned those properties, like way back when, that very first week, and my students were kind of like, what? Why are we even like brushing over this? Right, this, this is why, those things that we learned before, they are telling us what we're allowed to fill in here. Yes, Kate? So not to be like that guy, but when am I gonna use, like what, what do I use slope for? So what, what do you like in, slope like, for in general? Like, yeah, in, like, in, like, in, like in real life. So slope is, slope is everything that you are using in real life. So. Anything that you want to like talk about information that is happening as a projection with data, which basically affects some portion and aspect of every single job that exists. Okay, so here at the school, we have someone who is hired full time who looks at what lunches are eaten, how much of them is eaten, and then they make predictions as to how much we need to make next time. Okay, that is all done on what is the slope? How many students are eating this per day? What is happening per this? Any business model? I wanna show growth data. Okay, things from how much turkey costs at the store, um, deli meat is $5.99 per pound, that slope. Now, when we're just talking about it in this aspect right here, you're not gonna see that connection. So I told you we're gonna do this really sort of unique sort of side unit here about writing equations of lines and tie these together. And next trimester, you are gonna do your own entire data analysis project where you are going to collect data, you are gonna talk about that data, you're gonna to have to write equations of lines from that data, and you're gonna to have to talk about what that means in the real world with data. And that's where this stuff gets used. What about like the graphing part of it? Well, like, like do you so, use like, would I use that in my everyday life? Well, I mean, is anybody gonna use everything that you ever learn in your everyday life? No. No. I No, that's just a flat out no. But I think the reality of the statement is here, um, whether you think you know everything you're gonna do in your entire life, you don't, okay? We're all teenagers, young teenagers at that, okay? And so, what are you actually gonna do for everything for your entire life? Well, I don't know, but, what you are going to do is you are going to have to interpret information that's given to you, okay? And you are going to have to think about what that means. And when you see information, I mean, here's, here's one that we see all the time right now. Have we been paying attention at all or hearing at all about information with what's happening in Australia right now? Right now? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Wildfire. There's a wildfire. And what is happening? Animals are dying. Animals are dying. One billion. Okay, so what does that mean? If th this many animals are dying, what does that mean is happening to some of these animals? They're going okay, to so how are we going to take that data and interpret? Okay, does it matter if thousands of animals died if there are billions of them? Well, I don't know. Let's talk about how fast they're dying. Let's talk about what that means. You're interpreting that information j just like you did like with this here in the polar bears, right? That's what that is doing. How do I take that information that's being given to me and make sense of it? Does that mean every single time you're gonna write a formal equation and graph it? Well, no, but you should definitely be able to think about what it means and do something with it. Okay? So from this, I wanna show you one more thing. We should also be able to graph in point slope form. As long as you can find the important information in point slope form, graphing in point slope form is very, very similar to slope intercept form. So if we want to graph something like y minus two equals one half times x plus four. Is that a question, William? Oh, no. Tell me what you want, tell me what you know. So the point would be negative four, two. Okay, so would we agree in slope intercept form, our starting point was always to find that important information. So let's do that same thing. So what do you say our starting point is, William? Negative four, two. Negative four, positive two. Class, do we agree with that? We're all okay with negative four, comma two? 
Okay, and what's our slope gonna be? One over two. One over two. So are we okay with this being our important information? Which one of these can we do something with right now? The point. The point, right? We can plot the point, negative four comma two. So let's plot this point. Okay, so on my graph, I'm gonna plot the point negative four, positive two. Now, it's gonna get really exhausting and your brain has to kind of think about it because how many times have I told you in the last week, rise, overrun, right? Vertical and then horizontal? Yeah. But how do we plot an ordered pair? One over two. Horizontal yeah. and then vertical? Why are they backwards? I don't know. Blame old dead men, I'm not sure. Okay, so make sure you're plotting the ordered pair negative four, positive two, okay? But then doing a slope of up one over two. And here's our line. See how that's very similar to what we were doing before? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 